Uh, hi everybody, uh, my name is Marco and today I will talk about EAST, uh, which is a companion tool for building NCS and Zephyr applications that we have developed in Ernest. So, so quickly about what is EAST, like from, the, from really far away. So it's a command line meta meta tool written in Python. It's useful for creating, managing, and deploying Zephyr, NR uh, Zephyr or NRF Connect SDK projects. Uh, it's built on top of West and Nordic NR Nordic's NRF Connect toolchain manager. It's not intended to replace them, but it's to be used alongside of them. And it's open source and available on our company's GitHub. So essentially what so what you can do with this so it supports automated toolchain installation of ncs projects uh it offers sandbox development environments and it does uh automatic release artifacts generation it has a support for build types i will explain what i mean exactly by this a little bit later and it uses some, and, and it includes some commonly used developer utilities at least the ones that we found that we mostly use all the time um what will you gain listening to this talk? So you will learn, you will see some, uh, you learn why tooling is important and how it impacts our development, basically how it enable, enables us to be a little bit more productive. Uh, you will learn how the East was designed and why, and there's gonna be at the end, there's gonna be a hands-on demonstration of, of East. So a little bit about me and my background. So I'm an uh, electrical engineer by education and firmware enge systems engineer by profession. I have been working in DNS for about four years now and I did, in that four years, I transitioned from completely, completely from PCB designer slash assembly engineer to the firmware engineer, like every, everything, all, all the possible things on the way. So I, we have, uh, I have worked with uh, on the consumer, uh, consumer devices, medical devices, uh, mostly IoT systems with a little bit of uh, machine learning on the side. And internally, I have been also working on some internal tooling plus the, the DevOps for our projects. So really quickly about what Irnas does and why this is kind of connected with what we do. So we are, for, mo for, uh, for most, we are de a development company. So we design electronics, we develop, uh, we de uh, develop firmware and software for them, and we create mechanical designs. We specialize in creating a prototype and bringing it to an end-to-end -end solution as quickly as possible. Uh, and we are also official mo uh, Nordic design partner and uh, Zephyr project member. So. So this is basically our so this is basically our firmware stack at Irnes. Um, some some few years ago, Irnes made a strategic decision to only focus on one single platform. To uh, and we picked Nordic because of their low power hardware, Bluetooth support, and their excellent development platform. And this meant at the beginning we were mostly doing our projects uh, using by uh, using NRF5 SDK. As the things evolved, so did we. So we switched to the to the NCS. Uh, which is based on Zephyr, as you probably know. Um, my, let's say, my first bigger firmware project was uh, quite interesting. There were like, uh, it was a con consumer device which had motor control. It had to advertise over BLE. You could connect to it. Um, it had support diffu, and it was actually four different uh, products which had similar functions and they all shared the same code base. And this code base had to support like, I think it was like at some point for each of the boards, like two or three hardware revisions. So we were creating new images on pretty much daily basis. And we turned that project from a prototype to 100K units in about nine months. Uh, we used NRF5 SDK and NRF52 832, as you can see in the picture, and this was kind of like our bread and butter for the, all the pro, all the future projects projects that came in, and they were similar in that case that they they introduced new board, boards that had to be supported and they need to be quickly developed. So, alongside of this, we, we faced some of the challenges that we at the moment at the at that moment we didn't have the answer for so for example how to manage several different boards and how to manage build variants for example i had the hardware and i was building i i could build my firmware fine and i had a colleague that was working remotely and only had a development kit from nordic and he was doing the the, the bluetooth stuff so he still needed to somehow build the board and test the functionalities 
Um, so we needed some kind of build variant that would disable motor controlling part and just do the Bluetooth stuff. Um, another the pro one of the problems was how to quickly and efficiently create re releases. So we had to be sure that whatever we put outside, the, cl the client is going to use it. It's not going to either break the device or it's going to he's going to upload the wrong image to a, uh, it's going to upload the image to a wrong device and such like that's like how to make this much more clear and also like how to create a producible built environment again like we at that moment at that point we didn't had a way to say you should use this uh, GCC version you should use this kind of uh, this kind of a make tool um, so there needed to be a way that we can set up this quite fast. And also, as the projects came running this, we had these issues all the time and repeatedly. So we also had to solve this. Um, so in that, in that kind of environment, first version of the East came out. Uh, at the time, it was not named like that. It was just some internal tooling that we used. So we were 100% inspired by what Memfold was showing on their interrupt blocks. Um, so what we what we basically did was we took the default NRF5 SDK make file, we expanded it a little bit so it could accept target chip, it could uh, accept uh, the name of the board, software and hardware revisions that will be later baked into the final image, optimization, flags and so on. So. And then we used a tool called invoke to call that make file. So for those that you don't know, it's like it's it's a tool written in Python and it's very, very similar to make. You create a it's command line tool, you create a command and suddenly you say uh, and, and you write help and you, you're gonna see that command there. Uh, it's a little bit easier to work with and also supports configuration automatic. Uh, so it it supports configuration via, uh, via YAML file. And this worked fine for a while. Like we could, we created a few commands and we were using them, but we still had to solve the tooling problem. So in that case, again, because of the mem fault, we used we used Conda. So this was so this is like a, it's a, again a tool tool for the Python uh, packages, but can, uh, for versioning and installing Python packages. But it can also do that for any, for any kind of a binary that you can think of. So, for example, we used it for to download GCC, to download Make, and all, of course all our other uh, Python related stuff. And but this okay, so this tooling was it was very useful for us. We had we were using we are still using it today, this day. And but it's only suitable for NRF5 SDK, SDK projects, not for the Zephyr or NCS. Um, so. This is this is basically a screenshot of what commands that we used in this uh, this uh, program. So it's like you can see like very common ones like build, clean, flash, uh, debug. Uh, Nordic has like the, had all the set uh, the entire setup with the diff few images. So they have to be you have to create an application, build the application, build the bootloader tie them together, sign them. So like this is all, this this was first done all manual. So we automated it. Um, even this, uh, on this project, we were also using Memfold. So there's one command there that is like to create an image, send it to the Memfold server. Um, so this was, this was quite useful for us. And while we, while we started, when you started working with NCS and the Zephyr, we, we found out that we had kind of the same issues as before, but some additional ones. So we will, so the first one was like, we were switching between the projects all the time. Like most of our developers are actively working on one or two projects and maybe even maintaining the third one uh, alongside it. And all of the projects are running different versions of NCS. So we had to switch between those versions and figure out how we're gonna do the, uh, the tooling. So at that point we solved this with like, we downloaded separate versions of NCS um, on the computer and changed it in the in the shell scripts to to use a specific uh, one. Um, so again, reproducible build environment. At that point, we didn't have a good answer to that, and yeah, we just left it at that. And hopefully, most of the time, it worked okay, mostly. Uh, and also, like th this was a big one. So creating firmware releases by hand took way too much time. It was error prone. Like again, like we, one of our projects had well, my, one of my colleagues were work working on a project that after accounting for all possible boards and all the hardware variations, there were like 81 different unique combinations that you could build the firmware. And there was no way that you could do this by hand. Like and it was not done by hand. So only the relevant one was done. Was, were done. So 
if something broke, you would not know it until you build the board, build the board, build the image for that board, and you will find out that it broke several commits ago. So we we detected that there is some there is there are some some problems that we can solve with this. So we set out to, to create some internal tool that would solve them. So that that in the, that became East. So the tool the goals that we wanted to achieve were. Uh, firstly, it had to be familiar to the vast user. So uh, we didn't want to create yet another tool that the developer will have to learn. And we, had to, we wanted it to be as seamless as possible. Uh, we wanted it to, uh, to automatically detect and install the tool chains for the NRF project, uh, NCS projects, we, because we mostly use that. And it needed to have a sandbox development environment. Like we didn't want to we didn't want to uh, have the access to the system binaries if we didn't need them, or, or that they we would have some kind of a version clashes. Uh, and also, it should support, support automated generation of release artifacts for entire project. It should have a support for build variants, and it should be suitable for CI. Uh, so we wanted, uh, ideally, we wanted to have a tool that later, we, later on we could reuse in our GitHub actions to directly call it and be done with it. So, to, so these were like, uh, so we identified some building blocks that, that needed to be done. So the first two are kind of like, they're kind of like trivial how to make them. Like there's, uh, I was developing this so for myself. Uh, I, know, I know how to do Python. So both of these two things are well done in Python. There are existing libraries for that. So we, we, re, we reuse that. Uh, but the third one, so sandbox development environment, was like uh, the choice of that will impact how the whole tool, tool looks like and how how easy it would be for a developer to actually use it. And so that so that was like the main point that we had to um, we had to address. So we started looking at things. So of course, first we looked at, at the Conda, and we, because we already knew it, it had a simple interface. You just create one YAML file. It tells, I want this version of GCC. I want this version of Make. And you activate the create environment and activate it, and you can run the commands in it, and you get that. Um, but on the downside, it's not a real sandbox environment. You still have the access to your system binaries. Like on one of our projects, I, I was using this for quite a while until I figured out that I was using the tools that were not even specified in the YAML file. Like, and this was like, okay, that's not good. Um, one of the things was it was hard to create environment. It's hard to create environment file for the NCS just due to the, the whole amount of the tooling that is required to to create it. It's yeah, uh, it would be the sometimes you can find it. So for example, Conda is pulling the packages from the Conda repository, which is a which has a huge number of packages. But for example, if you don't uh, if you don't find your pa uh, that package that you need, you have to create it for yourself. In previous case, for example, NRF, NRF command line util utilities were not were not made by anybody yet, so we had to make them so we could download them. Um, so if there was no package, you had to create it, you had to maintain it. Um, also, packages can break. I had instances where I was using the same environment for a while; it was fine, and then suddenly it didn't work. So. Conda didn't seem like a good solution at the time, um, but we could, we might, but we could still use it for bootstrapping our projects and managing all, all other our tooling, tooling that we required additionally alongside the tool chain. So the next, the next stop was like, of course, Docker. Um, the idea was have one image per NCS version and use the Python SDK for interacting with the containers that we would be running. Um, so. Advantages: It's a real sandbox environment. You get what you install in the image. Uh, it's it was easy to create image with with NCS tooling because they were for they were existing they were uh, they were existing examples that we could look at and learn from them. Um, but it had all other aspects of it that we had to solve. So all the the problem with the image management so how does developer get the image how does it how does he work with it does he enter the the container uh, interactively uh, how to make uh, how to avoid the constant uh, startup times and stuff like that um, and also we uh, looking through the internet i saw there were some issues with usb serial and serial post communications i'm not sure yet because i didn't research this enough i'm not sure yet how how real are those problems um 
but we saw that like some advanced understanding of the Docker would be needed and uh, a time was required to invest into this. So um, this was, so we chose, so we said, okay, Docker seems to be, it seems to be a hard pad, but we're going we're gonna to take it because it seems the right way. So this was like initial idea, uh, an initial architecture of the East and basically all the, all the building blocks, all the infrastructure that you would need uh, to run this thing. Keep in mind that like the smaller, so this, um, the smaller, uh, oh, oh, sorry, this, the smaller block in the, on the right side is like actually what the user has to interact with. Everything else is just, is just for the, the guy who is doing the infrastructure, me. <laughs> uh, the main idea was just pass the vast commands to the Docker container. So if you call, for example, east, uh, east build, that gets to tur turned into vast build and it's just passed along, uh, along to the Docker container to do its thing. Um, when we made this, we were like, okay, we would like to talk, this, this seems like it could work. Let's talk to the Nordic guys to see what they think about this. And we wanted to hear, we wanted to present their, uh, the idea to them and hear uh, the opinion, their opinion about it. And of course, we, because we wanted to know if there are some solution that we were not thinking about or we didn't just know, just, just didn't know it. So one of the things that they suggested was immediately was basically NRF tool toolchain manager. So this was known to us and we knew that you could install, it does its job very nicely. Like you can install the tool chains, you can update them. Every time when, the NCS, when a new version of the NCS comes out, you can, uh, you, you have it available there, you download it and you're, and you're using it. Um, but the downside for that was like, it's a, it was, uh, it's a GUI program. So we, you cannot interact with it programmatically, at least in a, in a, in an easy way. Um, but then we found out from them that they also have, um, an exec executable version of that program that is running in the background. And we were like, okay, that seems very interesting. So what does it do? It basically, it is the tool chain manager. It, the GUI is just the front end for it. So it does all the things that we needed. So you can see on the commands, like it, search for, it searches for installable tool chains, it installs them, it uninstalls them. But what is also really cool about it, it can launch arbitrary commands inside of a sandbox environment. So this would mean that our like this is exactly what we were searching for and this would greatly simplify what we had to do in order, in order to create the East. So for example, so this is, uh, there are some blocks here. So for example, our example command from East, it's like East build some kind of board is just passed on to the NRF to, to toolchain manager. And you basically say launch uh, with that version of NCS and after the double dash, you add your command and that's it. So this was like, uh, so the, the middle one is the first version that we started and prototype with and we were like, okay, this seems great. This works. Um, the actual version that is used in the, in the, in the currently is the second one because we realized that, uh, the error codes do not get propagated outside of the toolchain manager. So if you send some command inside and the build fails, uh, toolchain manager, it's not propagated through the error code. So there had to be, you had to do some bash magic to, to, to get, uh, uh, to figure out if some success.txt file was created. And based on the pre presence of that file, you could determine if this is, was, if this uh, command ran successfully or not. So instead of that block, big block, <laughs> it was just this. So, uh, so this is the current architecture. So it's just the behavior east is depends on just two files. So the vast YAML file, which is present in the NCS project and the, e, the east.yaml file, which is completely optional. So if you're not using it, you lose some of the, you lose some of the other, the other new features, but if you do, you still have the access to the sandbox environment, you're, you can still write the commands and send them directly to the toolchain manager. Um, so, yeah, so this is the screenshot of the help output. Uh, so generally, so uh, like a little bit of an overview. So there are two, so we uh, split the, the commands into dif different kinds of commands, uh, into different groups. So we call them wor workspace and system. Uh, workspace, command, workspace commands can be run inside of a um, uh, vast workplace. So, and, and this is considered by the Zephyr and the NCS, anything that has dot vast folder inside of it and all the subdirectories sub uh, of that folder. 
um, because we said, okay, some of the commands only make sense if they run inside of this. Um, the other the other group of commands was the system command, which basically is basically you can run them anywhere you want to. Um, it has some so the east itself has some common vast commands like build, flash, debug, and like I said, you can do you can configure it via YAML file. Um, so so one of the key features is uh, build type. Uh, to explain it, so it's basically uh, so it's basically just a set of kconfig fragment files. So for example, um, for example, if I'm working on, on some kind of a project and I see a, a need for a development version of that, uh, of that uh, firmware, I would create a dev build file and I would put speci uh, specific uh, development specific kconfig options into that dot .conf. And that would be my kind of the build type. So, to order to do this and not to break anything, what is what is being done with the with the NCS, uh, we said okay, uh, kconfig files. If you're using this, kconfig files have to be stored in conf folder, and project conf is now called conf uh, is now called conf.conf. And we, if you do, if you're doing this, you're implicitly have a release build type, which is just the common.conf. So anything else that you create it's using that common.conf plus anything on top of it. So for example, so if you have like the, um, you, s you can see on the left, you can see example east YAML file. You can see that for some example app, um, there are two different types of build types. So dev type and de uh, debug type. So for example, dev would have, would enable debug optimizations, would enable RTT, and it would disable MCO boot just because it takes a long time to flash it. Um, and uh, the debug would be just enable debug, debug optimization. So with this uh, YAML file, the, 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 there, are there are three possible build commands that you would, do, you would be using. So without any flag, so that means I'm using the, that implicit release version that just uses the common, or dev and debug that use the groups. Uh, the next thing is East release. So this was like very, this, uh, this was like number one pr priority for us to have it. Um, it basically just runs all the possible combinations of application, VAST boards and their hardware revisions and build types. So it's just a series of East build, VAST build commands. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can also build samples if you list them. Uh, and the created artifacts are renamed and then zipped. And you can then, you have just a release folder with all the zips and you just upload them to the GitHub release or uh, for example, Memfold or whatever you're using and that's it. So there is, we didn't have to do this by hand anymore. So when to use East? So if you're working, so it's, it might be useful to use East if you're working on multiple projects with different NCS versions. Uh, you need to build firmware images for several different boards and build variants, and you want to quickly set up uh, projects. And you might want to use East if you don't want to manage development environment on, on, several, different uh, on several development machines. Um, so this is, this is the, our, our small roadmap. <laughs> Uh, we have like uh, we are thinking about changing a little bit the configuration for format for the build types. Uh, we want to support patch files. Sometimes we find the need that uh, we want to change something how it's done in Zephyr, or maybe we find a, maybe we will find a bug, and we don't want to wait for it for, to be fixed. So we fix it ourselves. And there has to be a way for a developer to be basically say, I ran vest update, maybe east update, and all the patch files are automatically applied. So you're not, it's, so the, it's just optimization. You're not thinking about this, that you have to do something and to avoid some debugging time. And also, um, because we, we had an issue with that before, uh, we need a way to show like deltas, uh, deltas between kconfig. Uh, when changing kconfigs, we, we need to be able to show the deltas what actually changed because uh, a, devel a developer of mine was like very puzzled why enabling one option enables the whole logging system when he didn't want it, but it was just unspecified and then it got enabled. And if he said it disabled, he would get the error, but he didn't. So that's one thing that we learned. Okay, uh, demonstration time. Uh, let me change the view here.
Okay. So. So what I will show you, so I have here like the, the, the Zephyr, the example application from the Zephyr project repository. I changed, I checked out a specific version of the NCS uh, for this, uh, for this presentation. So you have here like the general, the general structure. Um, actually, if we go inside of the application itself, yeah, like this is the general, general uh, structure of application that you have. I did already did some of the modifications for these talks just to avoid some of the waiting time, but, and I will explain them w which they are. So uh, it's already, so one of the things that I did was change the West, West YAML to change this into uh, NRF correct, uh, an, uh, NCS project. So I checked out the specific version and already ran West update. Um, and also I created a few board, of the board overlays. So for example, let's see, okay, let's go and build the application. So if you wanted to build this with East, you would just write, for example, is built. Now, if I run this, this, the, the East will tell me that I don't have a Nordic toolchain manager installed on the system. It cannot do anything. It's not useful without it, so it tells me to do something without it. So it tells me to run a command that will basically do the system setup and download, download it for me. And it does that. It puts it in some uh, local uh, folder. Great. And now I'm like, okay, let's try this again. Let's, I have this now and I want to use it. And now it tells me that it detected the toolchain, but I don't, I don't have it installed. So you need to. So for every for every version of the NCS, you have a you have a separate toolchain, and it, that needs to be installed. So I did. So let's let's run this. I already downloaded the toolchain, so this part is going to go really fast, and it's just going to unpack it. But otherwise, it would take about I don't know, like three to five minutes to get to get this working. Um, just to save a little bit of time. Okay, so let's try again if this builds. Yeah, it does. Okay, so this is, so taking into account, so if somebody had to, if somebody had to make this uh, go from the real beginning, they would have to uh, pip install the tool uh, run the vest update, uh, cl clone the repository, run, run the vest update, and install the specific toolchain. And they would be ready. Depending on their internet con internet connection, they would be like, I don't know, this would be probably like 10 minutes, and they could build the project, and they would uh, they could actually run it and start working something on it. So that's how it works. Um, so to show off the the the, the build flex, let's. Let's see what we have here. So the example application comes with some configuration files. So we have here projectconf, rttconf, and debug.conf. So if we look every single one of them, so projectconf, uh -huh, okay, enables a sensor. So this one is gonna be, we're gonna create for this our conf folder, and we're just gonna move it inside and rename it. Uh, if we look into the debug, okay, so debug enables some debug optimizations and logging in console. So we also we are also interested in this. So we're going to move it in there. And also there is the RTT, which just enables RTT, but without logging. So we know that if we want this, we need to have logging enabled. So we need to use these two uh, files in conjunction. So let's move it again into the com folder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's this. Now, to actually configure this, we need to create East YAML files. So this, I have already prepared a little bit of a snippet here uh, because I have a example on the on the project site. Uh, so east .yaml. and yeah, here is the, here is here. So basically, like we said, three build types. Release is implicit one. Uh, debug type is just going to use debug.conf and RTT build type is just is going to use debug.conf and then it's going to add RTT.conf. So we should be good with that. And for example, now if we go to build our application, so let's 
clean the clean the build for, folder and run it again. You're gonna see, mm, yeah, you're gonna see. So you get some extra extra diagnostic here message that there, the build folder was not found in running CMake build, uh, and you can actually see that the common conf is used here. So I the the east has a echo command, so you can actually see what commands are being passed to the to the NRF connect. So this is this was useful for me for debugging. It's also useful for somebody to understand how is this actually working. Um, and it just yeah in this case it did just that but if we clean it because there was uh, it detected it doesn't have to rebuild because the all the configuration is already the same but if you're running it again uh after it lists all the possible tool chains it's going to launch the, this is the command that launch, launches the whole build and you can see there's our uh, there's our our VAS build command and then the uh conf file that we're setting to the common.conf and the touch success thing. So we created this. So for example, if we wanted a different build type, let's say RTT, for example, um, the ease would detect that you change the build type, so it has to rebuild the project and it would add the two overlay configs here and you can see conf debug, conf RTT. So, and it did, it did that. Um, and that's basically it. You're switching between the build types, however you want. Um, the next thing, that is useful is is the release so if i just run it anywhere inside from the project it's going to look at the uh, istiamo file and it's going to try to it's going to try to build all the possible build combinations of the of the of the images that i have so i made it so that you get like a small table that tells you what kind of app are you building what is it a, is it an app or is it a sample for what kind of board are you building and in the end the build type. So at the bottom you see, uh, let's say, redacted, a redacted um, version of the build commands that are being run, so you can know what is happening. Now, if anything would break at this point, the build would stop. You would get the uh, the, the build output, and you could look and try to figure out what went what went wrong in this process. Um, now, created the release files. So if we go if we go here, we can see there's a folder inside. Uh, that it's new, it's a uh, release folder. Now, if we get inside, there's gonna be a few zip packages and a folder which contains all the created binaries. So the zip packages are basically contain the contain what's inside of the apps and are useful to just push, push them to the GitHub. So if we go into the apps, so you can see, for example, here's the example app that we named. You could have several apps in your project. Uh, and if you go under it, then you have different different build type uh, versions. For example, if we go to the RTT, then you see that you were building this for two different boards. And finally, at the last stage, you get you get to the final dot bean dot elf dot hex files. Now, the currently the the naming the naming format that it's used here it's not it's not configurable. It's the one that we used, and it's, maybe it's a little bit verbose, but it just helps to prevent any accidental mistakes that happen. Um, one specific here, like what is happening here, like you can see that the version was uh, the last uh, the last tag was was is used here. So, for example, because we checked out this version, it's going to appear here. But because uh, we uh, we have modified the the Git, uh, GitHub uh, sorry the Git repository, it's ha it has some changes. So that's why the system adds uh, basically this qualifier, which is just uh, Git hash. Uh, of this current thing that happened, plus plus the plus, which has, which has, uh, says that your repository was dirty at the time when it was built. Um, this is useful, for example, when you are quickly debugging and you need to perform the whole release process uh, all the time because you are you are giving out maybe to the client or maybe to your colleague the the supposedly entire image, and you need to at some point you need to be able to identify what did, what is working which one was not working which one was working and that's that's how we do it if you are so if if you are if you check out a, a directly a version and uh, a sorry a, a tag and it does not have uh, any un um, un uh, uncommitted changes you're not going to have this uh, qualifier here um yeah that's i think that's about it um yeah. Uh, 
thank you for your attention. Um, Q and A time. Online. Sorry. Can you? Is the mic working? We have a question online. Okay, just talk. Fine. Um, so uh, Luke Seegers is um, asking, do you guys use this in CI/CD? If question mark. If we need to install all of this every time in a GitHub Actions, for example, it will take a lot of time. Um, do you have a solution for that? Caching, Docker, things like that. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, can you repeat, please? I didn't sure. hear well. Um, are you using this in CI CD? Uh, currently, at the moment, no, uh, because we didn't get that far. But like, it would be at that point is it is trivial to actually make it run in CI uh, because. Uh, yeah, like uh, yeah, the issue is, of course, you're you're downloading something in, and uh, if the worrying part is that you have to re-download every time when you're doing build. This is not true because you can use, for example, in GitHub Actions, you can use caching. So, for that entire, um, is to saving all the tool chains, all the NRF uh, NRF tool chain manager in in a file, and you can say to GitHub Actions, I want this file. I, sorry, to the folder, and uh, you can say to the GitHub Actions, I want this folder to be cached. So. Every time you can still, you will still run the same kind, same kind of commands, and this is just gonna say that, yep, this is installed, this is installed, continue with the build, and yeah, it's gonna take a long time the first time, the, but every repeating one now. Okay, I've got a personal question here. Yes. Are you able to enable the SBOM generation that's in West? SBOM, uh, this is actually, that this is like actually one of the issues that we have open yet and we didn't get to. Not yet, okay. but okay. like, because I think you've got some things you might be able to extend this the uh, the generation to capture yeah, to be yeah, useful, especially sure. like the configs and things like that. I'm, so I'm I mean, to talk to you on that after. At the point, like, uh, right, like right now, yeah, you can run, yeah, but you cannot do it correctly. You still need the tool. You still need the vast tools installed to to run as bomb. Uh, we could, of course, yeah, we could add this command inside, and we, we intend to do so. Um, but like apart aliasing basically commands so just turning this into from west to the east as one um like i guess like added value would be some a different um a different representation uh, format, like to say, like here is your S bomb. Uh, this is what you use. Maybe something what's changed and stuff like that. Like there is, I think there is much more added value that we can create with this thing. Yeah. Happy to have a discussions and how we can make it a little bit better. Because yeah, I've got ideas here too. Oh, so. okay, cool. But I. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, congrats on the tool. It's really cool. Then the sec the thing is, I um, I was thinking the NCS, the toolchain manager, the NRF tool toolchain manager, it's not officially released, is it? You're basically extracting it from the from the package from the packaged NRF Connect for desktop tool, aren't you? Or no, I'm. Uh, it's on the GitHub. Oh, okay. So, you're so there's a how it's called PC NRF tool yep. uh, repository, and yeah, like. Uh, some people from the Nordic basically said, like, we are, we are using this, like, try this out. And after we figured out, okay, this is what it does, uh, we're basically checking every time and so on to see, like, aha, uh -huh, okay, there's, a, there's maybe a new version. We are, di we are directly downloading from the URL of the GitHub. The, okay, I the, see. The, 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 the binary. I see, I see, I understand. Okay, because I'll, I'll bring this up internally to see if we can actually make official releases of this because if you're you know if you're using it it makes it makes sense yeah like yeah it, we found it useful i mean i understand that this mi this might be a specific use case but like i'm like you could saw you could saw like i'm used to the using this stuff in the command line yeah and uh, i know that nordic is actively developing the vs code and everything in the environment around that but we saw that like even if we, even if you're using that, it's still very, very beneficial for us that we are using the same kind of a tool that we would use, for example, in the CI. So we, we would see what the expected results is, and like, like developing stuff in GitHub Actions takes a long, long time to debug, and like the debug, the debug uh, cycle is quite long, and you're like, uh, let's just test as much as I can on machine. So that's that was one of the things that we wanted to. Uh, so, so I'll, 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 the other thing that I want to ask is: Do you test this on um, uh, on macOS and Windows as well, or just uh, just mm, Linux? Yeah. So this tool just only runs on Linux because, yeah, this is mostly what we use. Uh, we had some clients that were that wanted to to run this on the on the Windows, 
and we said okay like we had to like internally some things uh, in the east have to change like it's in, in essentially it's a python program so th it has to become compatible for the both versions um i think the some of the clients made it run on the vsl on the win uh, on the windows but all not because of the toolchain manager right because i'm pretty sure the toolchain manager supports the three yeah, it does. It, of okay. course, there are three. There for the there are three versions. I think even four for um, for the Apple for the Apple sorry Apple Intel Apple Silicon uh, Windows and Linux. Yeah, yeah. But it was running in VSL, and I, as far as I heard, they had no problem using it in that in that sort uh, in that way. But I guess it depends then how you're doing the debugging and ex any extra stuff. Like I think it builds fine. Yeah. All right. That's that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Any more questions? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. The Python dependencies are they installed separately, or are they run in a virtual environment? Or is this the, Py the Python dependencies of the East? Uh, Python dependencies of Zephyr in general. Uh, the so Python dependencies of the Zephyr are contained in R NRF Connect uh, Toolchain ah. Manager. Like this is the, this is the great part about this. Well, like this is already in because program. it's built in. So yeah, you're right. doing this yourself. So we are running out of time. If anybody have any extra questions, feel free to talk with me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>